everyone. It's Michelle and welcome back to the Royal Daily Tea. So I'm really glad to hear that quite a few of you have downloaded or ordered the winter people that I suggested in my video yesterday. Now I do have quite a few audiobooks that I will be listening to over the next couple of weeks as I'm packing up my apartment and I'm moving to a new place in a couple of weeks. So I will definitely have some more recommendations for you. But you guys, we have a lot of juicy royalty to get through today, so you know what to do. Sit back and relax, grab yourself a beverage, and let's get into the royal daily tea. So today we're going to discuss a very disturbing story that has been circulating about Harry and Meghan for the past week, and several royal commentators have covered this on their channel but more information came out today, so I thought I would cover it here on my channel. Now it is, in my opinion, the most disturbing thing, and there's quite a few things about Harry and Meghan that are disturbing, but this is what I call borderline extortion, okay? Using innocent people for their own PR gain. It's pretty low life if you ask me. So back in 2021, when Harry and Meghan did that really weird, fake royal mini tour of New York City, and we were all wondering, what the hell are they doing there? I mean, they don't represent the royals. They're not working royals. They're not dignitaries visiting a foreign land. But they were acting like they were there on official business when they went to New York City and they toured that memorial for 9-11, they met with the mayor of New York City. Then they went to the UN, remember that weird photo op where Megan's walking around with a pad of paper looking like she's attending these very serious business meetings when they literally were seating in the lobby for a photo op. They were not there to meet anyone for the UN. There were no meetings happening with Harry and Meghan, but they were acting like we're official. We're here on official business with a camera crew. <laughs> they were filming their documentary for Netflix, even though they lied to our faces and denied it. So back in 2021, they were denying they were filming for a reality show, but we all knew they were. They thought we were a special kind of stupid that we don't recognize film crews following you around, hidden wires, microphone packs. I mean, why else would you be mic'd? Give us a break. But back in 2021, they thought they were smarter than us, and they were there on official business as unofficial royals visiting New York City meeting with the mayor, touring the 9-11 memorial, going to the UN for photo ops in the lobby. I mean, how embarrassing. They were also there for that weird vaccine equity where they were standing on stage, you know, giving that speech and she wore that marshmallow dress and she was walking around town, New York City with those very heavy coats and really weird ill-fitting pantsuits that were very, very expensive. So while they were in New York City, one of their stops was to an elementary school in Harlem. I believe it was called the 123 Mahala Jackson School where they were going to read from her brand new book, The Bench. At this time, she was really trying to plug The Bench, and they thought it would be a great idea for Meghan and Harry's PR that they would stop by this really poor school that 91% of the students are Hispanic or black, and they're all on public assistance. They come from economic hardships. Their parents are probably on welfare, and all of them get school lunches. This is a very, very poor inner city school in Harlem that Meghan and Harry decided would be really good for their PR for them to show up and act like they care. You know, because Meghan Markle is such Snow White, y'all. She really cares for the kids. So they showed up with two boxes, according to an insider, of rotted food, and a couple copies of her book, The Bench. But it gets even worse. 
So they had planned this fake royal mini tour six months in advance where someone who worked for Archwell was communicating with someone from the school board talking about we needed to get permission slips and the parents need to write off permission for their children to appear in photographs and appear on camera. On top of that, they wanted everyone, parents, teachers, and students to sign off on NDAs, meaning no one can talk about what happened during the filming and definitely cannot say anything negative about Harry and Meghan. Again, trying to silence people, you know, controlling the narrative. Why on earth would Harry and Meghan need to silence elementary school children, parents, and teachers. You're there to visit a school, to bring them food, and to read a book. What in the world are they going to say about you that's negative? Why would they have to sign an NDA? Now, I could understand they want to get some permission, some kind of legal release, just in case your children are being filmed. That is standard practice. But the NDA? That's a red flag. And so a lot of the parents were a little concerned about that. They were also barred from talking about it on social media permanently, not just during the event. It's been two years. They are forever silenced from talking about that event, nor can they ever speak ill of Harry or Meghan. That is called censorship and control. That's a red flag, in my opinion, for two charitable people reading to children. So according to the Daily Mail, The Sun has done an investigation into this very weird visit, and they got all of this information from the Freedom of Information request. They've revealed how the couple's advisors at Archwell tried to protect their image. They also talked about how Harry and Meghan had banned four British newspapers from attending the event at the World Trade Center, even though it is publicly owned. So again, Harry and Meghan always trying to control the narrative and censorship, but now they're censoring children. So Toya Holness, who worked for Archwell Foundation, she was in charge of the communication and setting up this meeting between the Sussexes and the children at this Harlem school. Now, apparently there was a lot of emails, a lot of correspondence that went back and forth over six months where pretty much Archwell was strong holding the school, making sure that people signed off on those NDAs and those releases. Again, it just gets worse from there. So during this correspondence where they were strong holding the, you know, these people of the school board and the parents and the kids, they also wanted to make sure that they zhuzhed up the back door space where Meghan Markle was going to be sitting reading a copy of the bench to these poor little school children. They offered a new carpet. They requested cushions, etc. So it looked more like Meghan Markle's aesthetic. So let me get this straight. You want to tour one of the poorest schools in the city, and you want to zhuzh up the background so it looks good for your Netflix documentary, and you're requesting they buy cushions and put in some new carpet so it looks really pretty for Megan to sit and read for the school children. Now, I'm not sure if they offered to pay for it and bring it themselves or if they were requesting the school themselves pay for this and zhuzh up the background so it looks really pretty. And if you look at these photographs, it looks like a movie set. They have these nice little woven baskets, and you got all the copies of the bench sitting next to Megan, and she's sitting there in her $5,000 suit reading to kids who come from a poor family. It's not like they're doing it for the students. They're doing it for their Netflix documentary because everything that Meghan Markle and Prince Harry do, it's for their own benefit. They are not nice people. It is not for charity. It is all to protect their image. They literally blocked four British journalists from taking photographs of them when they went to a public place 
the World Trade Center, having children and teachers and parents sign NDAs, and then making sure that the backyard space is pretty enough for Megan to sit in her $5,000 suit and read her own book, Self-Promotion, to poor children. According to some other rumors, unfortunately, I don't have the source. They also sent out emails to all of the parents where they were asking them to donate $5 to some random charity and nobody knew what the charity or the money was for. And people were asking. It turns out it was one of Meghan Markle's charities. Now, I don't have the article to prove that. I will try to find it and leave it for you below. But this is giving me Oprah Winfrey Hawaii vibes. You know when Oprah Winfrey, the billionaire who didn't lose anything in the Hawaii fire, sat there with a straight face and asked people who were poor and lost everything if they wanted to donate to help rebuild Hawaii? This is literally the same thing that Harry and Meghan did to these poor parents who could barely afford to send their children to school where they get free lunches. Oh, by the way, donate $5 to Megan's random charity. Are you kidding me? Shouldn't you be donating the $5 to the children? This is so disgusting. So they lied to the parents who asked, why are you filming? What is this for? They gave very vague answers, and they said it was not going to be used for promotional purposes, but they were literally in their Netflix docu-series. That's pretty promotional to me. Now, to make it even more disgusting, now Harry and Meghan are exploiting these girls in Nigeria. So they have on their website that they're helping these girls get back to school, buying them brand new backpacks and feminine products to the girls of Nigeria because Meghan Markle is 43% Nigerian, y'all. She's helping out her people because she cares. Now, we all know that Meghan Markle can give a rat's patootie about any of these girls in Nigeria. Once again, Harry and Meghan are exploiting poor children of color for their own PR image. I find this disgusting. This is exploitation at its finest. Is she taking a page out of Oprah Winfrey's book? Remember Oprah Winfrey with those Africa schools and all the bad things that happened to those poor girls? This is giving me Oprah vibes 2.0. So now Megan is telling people that she wants to move to Nigeria and she's got that Nigerian name that was given to her by the people of Nigeria at the Invictus Games. And then all over Archwell Foundation's website, they're now exploiting those poor Nigerian girls where they're showcasing those free backpacks and feminine products that Megan donated because she's Nigerian. Well, you gave those kids in Harlem two boxes of rotted food and a copy of the bench. Are you giving them school supplies also? Because they do live in America and they are poor. What are you and Harry doing for them? Oh, let me see. Nothing. So Megan is only pretending to care because it looks good for her image. Just like in 2021, they pretended to care about the people of Harlem. Meghan Markle once again is exploiting people of color for her own PR gain. How does she have fans? How do people not see she's using them? I don't understand it. I don't understand how these two fake individuals are getting away with what they're doing. So I'm so happy that the Sun and the Daily Mail are exposing them. We have said this for three years on my channel, but they are bringing receipts. So let me know what you guys think of this new exploitation that Meghan Markle and Prince Harry are doing. It's disgusting, guys. And again, I always feel like they can't shock me and they continue to shock me with their low-life antics.
Well, guys, that is all the royal news that I have for you today. Thank you so much for stopping by my channel. You guys were getting bigger and bigger every day. So again, if you have not yet subscribed to my channel, I hope that you will subscribe, like, and share my videos because it really helps to grow my channel. Thank you all for stopping by and watching my video, and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye, guys.